Okay, <laughs> it seems like I'm not allowed to take a look at my notes, but should still be fine. We will continue with some very interesting server hardware. As you might remember in some of the previous videos, we were looking closer at an IBM Power 5 CPU module, which also contained memory. This is one of the DR3 modules from this thing. <laughs> this is one of the DDR3 modules out of the Power 5 and if we compare this with the normal, even though it's DDR4, but the length of DDR3 and DDR4 is almost identical. If we look at this, the DDR... So this is one of the DDR3 sticks taken out from the Power 5 CPU module. If we now take a DDR4 stick, even though it's not DDR3, but the length is almost identical, normal desktop dim, compare the length, you will see the IBM stick is longer. But there are even weirder sticks a lot wider. That's what we will check out in today's video and two more dims which are not related to IBM but also technically very interesting. When C390 came to the market, Asus was putting a hard focus on the Apex board and also other boards like the Gene or like ITX boards, which were only featuring two memory slots. Back then with DDR4 times, like this stick right here, you could only get a capacity of maximum 16 gigabyte per stick which means a dual channel kit will feature maximum of 32 gigabyte. And then in the head of Asus, they thought they're limiting their customer base if they only have maximum of 32 gigabyte available for like high-end boards like the Apex board. So they teamed up with G-Skill and made these special dims. Just compare the size, you will see the Trident ZRGB DC, which stands for double capacity, is quite a bit larger. I bought them back then because I was just fascinated that it's something very unique and as I expected it's something that never came to the market again because availability was not great, the pricing was high and in the end I'm not sure how many people really needed 64 gigabyte for a desktop, most likely gaming PC. IBM has a similar kind of issue but on a different scale obviously. They're not limiting their CPUs to a maximum of two slots of memory obviously. For example the Power 8. Looking at that one, it can feature up to eight DIMMs in total. But back then, DDR3 sticks, they were limited to 16 gigabyte capacity per DIMM, which is not that much in the server world. So they decided to make their own DIMMs. They made these, it's called CDIMM, like the C and DIMM. The C could stand for custom or centaur. I'm not 100% sure because I found both in documentations online. Centaur because there is an additional chip on there it's a memory buffer chip and at the same time also a level 4 cache extension for the CPU, which is quite unique. And that's why this is called CDIM, I guess, Centaur Memory DIM. Now you're looking at a 32 GB DDR3 module, which also just counting the amount of ICs is quite insane. In total, because not only the front side is populated, but also the back side, we have 80 memory ICs on a single DIM. You can read it has a total capacity of 32 GB, which is already double than what was typically available back then. And underneath the heatsink, we have the Centaur chip. We will check that out in a second. But first of all, yep. <laughs> Look at this memory DIM, which is the size of my entire hand. Also, interestingly, this is only 16 GB, but this is also one generation older than these. This is for IBM Power 7. If we flip it around, we can see also a good amount of like empty pads. So I guess in theory, because you can also count on here, there's still empty spot D75. So I guess, yeah, they also made these with a lot more memory ICs on there, but this is one generation older than this one. Now underneath the heatsink of the IBM Power 8 DIM, the Centaur chip is quite a bit larger than the Power 7 DIM. What I was also just thinking about is that we could actually just simply straightforward delete this chip. Maybe neglect for a second that I accidentally cut into the PCB. That's what can happen if you use a razor blade for deleting. Oops. But anyway, if we just look at the package size of the chip, it's rather big compared to the chip itself. Could be because of the increased amount of chips it probably supports. And I guess the reason for that is because this chip is not only used on this DIM, but also on this one. And that is 
at least from what I could find online, probably the biggest memory dim that is available for purchase. It's completely insane. Just compare it with the size of a hand. It, it's larger. It's completely nuts. It's using the same controller underneath the heatsink. And as you can see, if you flip it around, it's 100% populated. So that's probably the biggest type of extension that's available for these kind of like C dims. And it was also quite expensive to purchase. I'm pretty thankful that I'm able to buy things like this for my YouTube channel to just show you guys what's available and what exists on the market. If I count it correctly, this dim has a total memory amount of 152 ICs. Now, if we think about that a typical DDR3 module like this one, it has 16 ICs in total. This should have a power consumption of maybe like two, three, maximum four watt. It's not that much. So the individual like chip power consumption may be 0.3, 0.4 watt. But now if we add this up for 152 pieces, this could equal easily a power consumption of like 50, 60 watt for a single dim. And then you also have to add up the Centaur power draw, which is an additional 20 watt, which means that this can have like 50, 60, 80 watt power draw. That's quite insane. So it's not only electrically a challenge, but also thermally. If you plug eight of these inside your server, you have like additional 500 or 600 watt power draw, which is quite insane. Also interesting that the Centaur chip itself is not only a memory buffer memory controller, but at the same time, it's also a level four cache extension, as I already pointed out. If you look at your typical Intel or AMD CPU, it has level one, level two and level three cache built on chip inside the CPU and that's it. There's no way to extend this, to upgrade this. The only thing you can do is use different memory modules, which is to some regard also an extended cache. It's just way slower. But for these DIMMs, the Centaur chip also includes an additional 16 megabyte of level four cache. And if you use eight of these, then you can have an additional 128 megabyte of level four cache for your Power8 CPU. Now that the Centaur chip also acts as a memory buffer and memory controller, it also makes the server upgradable to some regard because the memory controller, which is sitting in the Power8 CPU is connected to these chips, which are theoretically also memory controller, which means that if you upgrade these chips and also these chips, then you could theoretically use DDR4 DIMMs with a server which was only meant and built for DDR3. That's also a quite interesting concept. IBM Power9 and Power10 servers are using different DIMMs. They're using something completely new. And originally I wanted to include these into this video. Even though I could not find them online, I was not able to buy them, which is not that great, but we could still talk about pictures. But then a server company contacted me from Germany, which is working with IBM Power9 and 10 servers on a daily basis. And they offered that we can just stop by and look at everything they have, which I think will be far more interesting than just talking about the things in theory. And that's what should happen in the near future. All the modules we were just looking at, may it be a DDR5 desktop DIMM or some insane C DIMM, all of them are using volatile memory, the normal DRAM modules, which means that whenever there is a power outage or like you're shutting down your server, everything that's stored inside your memory will be gone permanently. That's just the way it is. But there are also solutions for this. And this would be one of these sticks. It's called NVDIMM. This is an eight gigabyte capacity DIMM. Not that impressive when it comes about capacity, but the function is very impressive. The NVDIMM, NV stands for non-volatile, means that the information that's stored on these DIMMs in case of like a power outage, the data can be restored. That can particularly be interesting, not only if you want to have your server be back up in a very short time, but also if you have like a memory database sitting on your memory DIMMs, then you can easily restore the information. Unfortunately, you cannot simply copy paste your information from the DRAM ICs to your SSD. That's also why this DIMM is rather complex, but it's still starting off with normal DRAM ICs for Micron in this case, on top here. In the center, we have a iGigatech controller, which is responsible for storing the information from the DRAM ICs to the flash module, which is sitting underneath right here. The stick has eight gigabyte capacity and the flash, the NAND flash right here has 16 gigabyte of capacity. Right next to the NAND flash, we also have an SOC, which is responsible for controlling the entire DIMM. Bottom left, we have the power connector and this will be connected to something which is called power gem. And the power gem are like small modules which will be installed inside your server and they contain large capacitors to store enough energy for the process. 
If we investigate the backside, you can see all those tiny ICs on the bottom. Those are multiplexers. And you could look at them like tiny switches, which are able to cut off the dim from the CPU memory controller in case of a power loss, because it's important that the dim is cut off from the rest of the system physically in case of the save and restore process. The save or restore process can take up to like 30 or 40 seconds for the information to be stored from the DRAM to the flash. It takes about the same time to restore the information, but once it's sitting inside the flash, it could theoretically sit there for like a year or two, two years, whatever, you're looking at, which doesn't really make much sense if you're looking at a server, but whenever you're rebooting or if your power is back, the capacitors will be charged again and at the same time the information will be restored from the flash to the DRAM and is accessible again. Intel has a very interesting but also unique technology that's a bit similar to the NVDIM and this is called the Intel DCPMM or also PMEM. But the difference is that all the other DIMMs we were looking at were based on DRAM ICs and this is using 3D Crosspoint. The downside though with these 3D Crosspoint modules is that they're a bit slower when it comes to read and write speeds. If you look at a conventional DDR4 stick, they can perform with about 25 GB per second. The DIMM you're seeing here in the video has a read speed of about 8 to 10 GB per second, so it's about a third of the read and write speed of a normal DRAM stick. But at the same time, it's also about four times cheaper and available in higher capacities. The stick here has 256 gigabyte and I only paid 280 euro for this DIMM. If you now compare this with a normal ECC registered stick with a capacity of 256 gigabyte, well, not even talking about that it's very difficult to find these available, the normal DRAM stick will be about three to four times more expensive. Now, obviously you can just straight plug this in your AM4 motherboard. It requires a select amount of CPUs and boards and also BIOS versions, which can only support these PMEM sticks. For example, the Xeon SP Cascade Lake CPUs, they can work with up to 12 memory sticks. And what's also special is that you cannot just go ahead and use 12 of these DIMMs. You have to mix them with the ordinary DRAM sticks, which means you can take six DRAM sticks with DDR4, and then you take six of those PMEM sticks. And this is kind of like a hybrid thing because you have the advantage of the high read and write speeds of the normal DRAM. And at the same time, you have the advantage of non-volatile memory on the 3D cross point and also the very high capacity on those PMEM sticks. And if you add this up, for example, you have six DRAM sticks with DDR4 and you have six PMEM sticks, then you extend the server memory capacity by 1.5 terabyte. That is quite a lot. Compared to the NVIDIA, it also stores the information permanently, but it does not require an external power source. At the same time, it's cheaper and also has higher capacity. Therefore, very, very interesting technology. And overall, I think um, the things we saw in today's video are very special and something we typically don't come across when we just take our look at ordinary DDR5 memory sticks. I hope you learned something from today's video and if everything works out, as I said before, we will be able to see some of the Power 9 and 10 servers in action soon. Thanks for tuning in, see you next time, bye bye.